Welcome back, my name is Guy, and today I want to talk to you about the Inkra Build It Modular Jig and Fixture System. This is the Build It Starter Kit, and it contains everything you need to build these five jigs here in front of me. I've got a tenoning jig, a segmented ring jig, a coping sled, an adjustable angle cutoff jig. and a table saw shooting board. Most of the jigs you need to build in the shop are sled based and that's really the beauty of the system. It gives you a solid platform to build on and it starts with this, the miter slider. This can be perfectly tuned to fit into your miter slot. There's the build it panels which are all pre-cut and pre-drilled to accept all the components of the system. And everything is connected with these, which are the T-slot panel connectors. So let's take a look at the Build It Starter System and see what's included in the kit. This is Inker's Build It System Starter Kit. Let's take a look and see what's inside. First, I've got a set of manuals and instructions, and also plans to create some jigs. Uh, these are printed on high-quality, glossy paper, full-color illustrations, very well written. I've also got a bag of Inkrit Build It knobs a set of build it brackets, a build it hold down clamp, and a bag of assorted screws and hardware and also a Allen key. We've got a small build it panel, I've got a large build it panel, I've got an 18 inch T-track, I've got an 18 inch T-Track Plus that it comes with this scale on it. I've got two T-Track slotted panel connectors and an Inkra miter slider. Today I'm going to show you how I built this, which is what I'm calling the ultimate crosscut sled. It's really light. It has an 11 and a half inch crosscut capacity, which is more than enough 99% of the time. It's extremely accurate and it has a repeatable stop too. Let's take a look at what you'll need and then we'll get to building it. These are the components you're going to need from Inkra to make the crosscut sled. You're going to need one of the small build it panels and two of the large build it panels, two of the miter sliders, four of the T slot panel connectors, two 18 inch lengths of Inkra track, the shop stop, the hold down clamp, a pair of build it brackets, a pair of build it knobs, and all the hardware you're going to need for this build comes with the various components you see here. I've got one of the small build -it panels here and I need to drill a couple holes in it. This is actually the first time after all those jigs I've made I had to drill holes in one of these panels. So I need to make a mark one and three sixteenths inch over and two inches up from each edge. Now I've got those two points marked. I need to go over the drill press. I'm going to take a five eighths inch drill bit. I'm going to go about halfway down, drill a counter bore with that and then punch a hole a quarter inch going the rest of the way through. These two pieces of maple are going to be the front and back of the sled. This one is 18 inches long. This is 23 and a half. These are both three inches tall by a full one inch thick. I've got the miter sliders in my miter slots and I just want to adjust these with the supplied Allen key until I get a nice fit with no wiggle in them at all and I have a nice slide to them. Now I can take my two large panels and using the first set of holes right here I can line those up on my miter slider and screw those in with the supplied hardware. Now take two of your T-slot panel connectors, locate those underneath the holes on either side, and then fasten those. Now that I've got this side complete, I need to do the same thing over on this side, just making a mirror image of this. Now that I've got these two sides of the sled complete, I'm going to take the right-hand side and I'm going to remove it from that 
miter slot. Then I'm going to take the small builded panel that I had before, and remember those two holes I drilled before, make sure those are the back closest to the infeed side of the blade. And I'm going to take this and screw this to the T-slot panel connector. Now that I have the small panel installed in the center of the sled, I can just slide this back a little bit. I'm going to raise the blade up, and then I'm going to make a cut right here and remove this side of the small panel from the sled. Now that I have this side cut off, I can remove the left side from the table saw. I'm going to lower the blade. I'll put the right side back in the miter slot. And now I'm going to attach this to this side. Now that I've got that attached to the right side, I can do the same thing I did to the left side. Back it up, raise the blade up, and cut off the excess right here. And I'll have a nice zero clearance on both sides of the sled. Now that I've got that cut, I'm going to lower the blade again. I'm going to put the left side back in the table saw and line these panels up so it's flush on the end right here. After these have been flush at the back, and I know the panels are even, I've taken one of the 18-inch anchor tracks, and I've mounted a couple of the brackets and the knobs for it. What I want to do is I want to take this, very carefully put that in there, bring it back maybe a at least an inch and a half from this edge, and then we're going to lock this in place. Now I'll take the whole assembly and just slide it back so it's off the edge of the table and you can get at these holes underneath here. I'm going to attach the fence to the sled using four screw holes here, 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 and here. I'm going to need to take the fence and line it up about in the center of that and I can go from underneath and I can mark where I need to pre-drill these holes In the hardware pack that came with your anchor track, there should be some one inch pan head screws. I'm just going to take that with the washer and I'm going to start them underneath. And no need to tighten this down just yet. With those started and this still loose, I'm just going to make sure everything lines up the same on the back and it's nice and square across the back. And I'm going to take some clamps and I'm going to clamp this in place right next to the miter slider. So now I can take my driver and drive these screws home. Let's take these clamps off. And make sure this still slides real nice, which it does. That's a good thing. Now we're going to take this whole assembly, very carefully take it out of the miter slots, flip it backwards, and put it back in. With this flipped around, we're going to perform the same operation with the front fence that we did with the back fence. So I just need to slide this off, mark, pre-drill, and screw that in from the bottom. Well, now I'm ready to attach the anchor track to the sled itself. And there's slots in the bottom of the anchor track, and that's going to correspond with that hole that we drilled before. So I've got uh, one of the bolts and a washer, and that's going to go down through there. And then with a nut and a washer, I'm going to tighten it up from the bottom. I'm just going to snug it for now. Well, I'm going to attach the fence to the T-slot panel connector with one of these L brackets. I've already attached a quarter 20 bolt to a knob. I'm not going to use a knob on this one, and that's just going to slide into that track like that. Then I need to put this in here, like that, add a washer, and then a nut. With the angle bracket installed, I can hand tighten these, and I mean very lightly tighten. I still want to be able to move these around if I nudge them a little bit, because the next step is to square this to the blade. So I've pushed the sled forward and I've raised the blade up so I can take my known square and lay it flat against that blade. Now I just need to take this, remember this is still a little bit loose, and just square everything up. And once I've got it square, I can tighten everything down. 
If you want a saw stop, you want to make sure that you have these anchor fences at least a sixteenth of an inch away from this kerf line to avoid cutting into the metal and setting your brake off. Now that's tightened down, I'm going to lower the blade a little bit and I'm going to do a test cut and see how well I did. I have gone ahead and made the through cut through the front and back piece and I'm just getting ready to cut this piece. It's about eleven and a half inches wide. So here's that first test cut and uh, it came out perfect. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Now what I need to do is I need to adjust this so it's parallel with this and that's pretty easy. Alright, so that's nice and tight and that bar is nice and tight across there. I've assembled the shop stop according to the directions and now I need to calibrate it. So I'm going to take this leading edge here and put it as close as I can to where that kerf line is and I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to raise the blade up. It's almost touching it right now and that's good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these knobs up just a little bit and on the back end here there's a micro adjust. I'm going to spin this blade. I'm just going to start moving it forward a little, little by little. So it just starts kissing that. And then I'm going to lock this down. Now that the stop is calibrated to the saw blade, I can lock this down with this nylon nut. And now I need to calibrate the scale to the stop. So I'm just going to move the scale to the left until it reads zero right under the left side of the shop stop. Now I've got my shop stop calibrated. I'm just going to make a test cut and make sure everything is working the way I want it to. So let's make a cut at eight and one sixteenth of an inch. Lock it down. Place my board up against the fence. I'm going to use the hold down clamp. Lock that down securely and make the cut. So let's unclamp it. Check the measurements. So it's exactly 8 and 1 16th. I'm just going to check this for square. Perfect. Now this sled only took me about two hours to make and calibrate. Considering its accuracy, its repeatability, and its safety features, it's really fantastic. Using the build-it system, you can design and build jigs like this quickly to accomplish many different operations in your shop. So spend more of your valuable shop time building projects and not jigs. Try out the Anchor Build-It system. You'll be glad you did. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.